That's fine, Colin. She'll start the stream. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, um, Vanessa. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome, councillors, officers, and general public to this first virtual meeting of the Planning Committee, Canterbury City Council. Um, uh, we're going to confirm uh, that the meeting um, is being recorded and live streamed via YouTube, and it will be published on the Council's YouTube channel. Um, I'd like to introduce um, the officers present um, on with me today. Um, I've got um, Simon Thomas, Head of Planning, Suki Montague, our Legal Officer, and I'm ably assisted by Maria, Andrea and Vanessa, who are supporting me from Democratic Services, and I need all the support I can. Um, as officers come online, they will be introduced if they are relevant. And can I now please invite Andrea to perform a roll call to confirm which councillors are present? Thank you. Yes, hello, everybody. Um, just to make clear, I'm doing a roll call of the 13 members of uh, of the committee who are voting this evening, OK? So, Councillor Baker. Present. Councillor Caffrey. Present. Lovely. Councillor Clark, who's a sub. I'm here. Lovely. Uh, Councillor Dixie, who's a sub. Present. Thank you. Councillor Eden Green. Councillor Eden Green. He was here. He is here. He's just meeting Andrea, but I can see him. Is he can you'll need him to confirm though? <laughs> yes. Councillor Eden Green, you're muted. I can't unmute him. Um, Councillor Eden Green, can you hear me? Can we, uh, can, can we carry on, Andrea? I'm okay. Sure. And then see if um, somebody can sort uh, Nick okay. out, please. Lovely. Councillor Edwards? Present. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Councillor Flack? Present. Thank you. Councillor Glover? Present. Thank you. Councillor Harvey Quirk? Present. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Nolan? Present. Thank you. Councillor Spooner? Yes, present. Yes. Uh, Councillor David Thomas? Yes. Thank you. And Councillor Wilson Hamilton? Present. Thank you very much. So that is everybody present. Um, we know that Nick is here, but he couldn't hear me. Can, can you just give him one more try just, for, just to see if he uh, can, can hear us? Or oh, we can hear him. Councillor Eden Green, can you hear me? Um, looking at the list, I believe, Chair, that um, Councillor Eden Green has temporarily left, left the meeting. Um, he's just rejoined. He's just rejoined, yes. Hopefully. If I apologise. I apologise, Chair. I completely lost all image. But you could obviously, we could, I could hear you, or you couldn't hear me. I apologise. I am present. That's Nick. You don't worry. worry. I was on the wrong. I was on the wrong meeting about ten minutes. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I confirm that I've only missed part of the roll call, and I don't regard that a significant loss of absence. Okay. Okay. Well done, Nick. Thanks for that. Thank you, Andrea. Um, just to read out the following statement, if I can, Andrea. Um, if councillors or officers wish to speak, they will use the in-meeting text chat facility and let the meeting know. If it is necessary for me to receive or seek advice as chair from officers during the meeting on procedural, legal, technical matters, I may seek a brief adjournment to do this. If the, line, if the live stream into the council YouTube channel fails, the meeting will be adjourned for up to 15 minutes to see if it can be restored. If it can't be restored, the meeting will be adjourned to another day. Should councillors need to leave the meeting for any reason or have technical difficulties, they should use a text chat facility to notify the meeting if possible. The Democratic Services Officer 
or I will then inform the meeting where necessary. If a councillor's connection becomes lost for more than a few seconds, the meeting may adjourn for up to five minutes to allow the connection to be reinstated. Uh, Vanessa, um, going to item one now, if we can. Um, apologies for absence. Thanks, Jay. We have apologies from Councillor Smith and Councillor Ian Thomas. Thank you. Um, item two, um, Vanessa, are there any substitutions, please? Yes, we have um, Councillor um, Dixie is substituting for Councillor Smith and Councillor Clark is substituting for Councillor Ian Thomas. Thank you very much. Um, uh, can, can you ask any councillors uh, that want to declare any further interest at this point? If they do, they will type the word speak into the text chat. And what, that, what I'll do, I'll invite each to speak in turn. Andrea, um, have you got a note of the chat? So I'll put my I chat. I have. I have. Can you hear me? I can't see if I've got my yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, uh, yeah, we yeah. have uh, Councillor Wilson Hamilton, then Councillor Harvey Quirk, and then Councillor David Thomas. Thank you very much. Um, we'll take we'll take them in order of the screen. And can I ask Councillor Wilson Hamilton, please, Steve? Good evening, people. Um, just declaration regarding the uh, gymnasium on Canterbury Road. Um, James Mayborn. Um, I know James through his family as. Um, him, his father and myself are very good friends, just um, through motorcycles, etc. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. If we can take the next one, please, then. And that's uh, Louis, Councillor Louise Harvey Quirk. Louise, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a voluntary announcement that I've been contacted the applicant of item 7, uh, but it's non prejudicial. Thank you. I've, I've lost sound. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, that's me. My fault. Um, I was panicking. In. Please, <laughs> please. Is it, is it, uh, did you call me? Sorry. Yes, David. Sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. It's um, um, item seven. The applicant is known to me. I did do a boxer size class with him about eight and eight or nine years ago. Non pecuniary, non prejudicious. Um, I've also received an email from him and a video. Um, and also, just to let you know, I've taken my video off of here because I was losing um, sound from you guys, uh, especially when your mic's on, um, just to come through. So I'll, I'll leave it on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Um, uh, Councillor Con Con Connie Nolan. Connie, please. Thank you. In common with, with other people on the committee, I just wanted to um, declare that I've uh, received an email from um, uh, Mayborn, uh, Mr. Mayborn, um, because he, he was late in sending his video um, through. But I believe everybody else has also received that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's correct, Connie. I think we've all, we've all had um, uh, some form of communication from, from the applicant. So, um, yeah. That's fine. Thank you, Connie. Uh, Pat, uh, Councillor Pat Edwards. Pat, please. Um, thank you, Chair. It was the same point as Connie. Um, I wasn't sure whether we'd all officially received that because he was late um, due to family circumstances, but um, just to make the same point. Uh, James Mayborn, video and email. Thank, thank you, Pat. That's uh, Yes, we have. Um, uh, Georgina, uh, Councillor Georgina Glover, please. Georgina, thank you. Uh, the same as the previous speaker, uh, an email and a video. And it, for me, it's non-prejudicial. Thank you very much indeed, Georgina. Lovely. Thank you, everybody. I think that's about um, uh, all the um, declarations that we need. Um, item four, public participation. Um uh, I've got to explain that any pre-recorded statements made by public speakers will be heard immediately in advance of the relevant items. Item five, can I ask the committee if they're happy to confirm the minutes of the meeting on of Tuesday, the 3rd of March 2020 as a true record? And I will pause to allow any comments to be made in chat. Thank you. So moved, Chair. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Georgina. Um, as no objections has been raised, I can confirm the minutes are approved as a true record. And I, I thank uh, Councillor Eden Green and Councillor uh, Georgina uh, for, for doing that for me. Um, right. The first night, the first business of the night is um, the application um, High Street uh, Whitstable. And um, can I ask, please, um, for um, Andrew Gamble, who is the relevant planning officer on this, to introduce the application. Andrew, please. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members. Um, I'm just going to set my screen to present now. So hopefully that should come up with the relevant presentation um, in just a minute. Um, Bear with me, is it going to work? Yep. So can you all see the screen for um, the committee? Is that showing? Someone can yes, we've got, we've got the yes, front. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. brilliant. Okay. That's fine. Let's just double checking. Let's let it share. Loading. Right, there you go. Yeah, so this is 76 High Street in Whitstable. Um, the proposal is for a chain of use from shops to takeaway uh, with an extraction system to rear. Uh, the site is within the Whitstable Town Centre and a secondary shopping frontage. Uh, so here you can see the proposal uh, for the extraction system, which would be located to the rear of the premises. Um, CC Heritage have raised um, no objections to this extraction system, um, subject to a condition that it be painted matte black. Here you can see a photo of the front of the shop, um, which was previously known as Pets Pantry, and I believe has been vacant for just over a year now. And this next photo uh, shows the rear of the site, um, and you can see they have indicated where the location of the proposed flue would be. In summary, it's considered that the proposal uh, will retain an active frontage uh, within the secondary shopping frontage and contribute to the vitality and viability of the town centre. And for this reason, for those set out within the report, the proposal is recommended for grant subject to conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Andrew, for that. Um, Andrew, are there any recordings of public speakers on this item, please? No, there are no public speakers on this item, Chair. Thank you very much, Andrew. Can I then ask um, any member would like to speak on this? We do have some... Speakers already listed, Chair. We have Councillor Baker first, please. Councillor Baker, please. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application is clearly in an area where there are similar um, usages uh, surrounding it. Uh, the application is only before us because the applicant um, worked for the council at the time of the application. If it was a um, member of the public not connected with the council, it would have been approved under delegated uh, decision making it wouldn't need to trouble the committee um having looked at it it all seems to be pretty straightforward don't see there is any way of objecting to this type of use when the surrounding buildings in the general vicinity are a mixture of such uses therefore i will propose grant with the conditions in the report thank you thank you very much uh councillor baker have we got a second after that uh, move to grant please i'll second that I'll second that. Thank, 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 thank you very much indeed, uh, Councillor Clark. Um, any other member wish to speak on it? We had the next speaker was Ashley Clark, followed by uh, Councillor Harvey Quirk. Councillor Councillor Ashley Clark, um, Ashley, please. Yes, all I was going to say was just draw members to the uh, uh, attention to the uh, condition. Uh, and these premises will not be open after uh, 10 p.m. So uh, they're very unlikely to attract a trade of drunks outside wanting a cork on top of their uh, what they've been drinking. So uh, I don't think we're going to get any problems at all uh, from this uh, on what we've seen. That's uh, a very sensible um, condition that still applies and on that basis uh, and bearing in mind what uh, Councillor Baker's already said 
um, I'm more than happy to uh, second this. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Clark. Um, Andrea, we have another speaker. Uh, Councillor Harvey Quirk next. Councillor Harvey Quirk, please, uh, Louise. Thank you, Chair. It was sorry. The the yes that I put in the chat was to approve the minutes, and then later on it was to say I was happy to second. So thank you, Chair. No comments. Thank you. No, no, thank you. It's uh, we, you know we 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 we're, we're going to have this um, slight things that uh, we need to adjust, and uh, as staff, it's working okay. Um, Andrea, any more speakers on this one? Yes, yes, we do. Uh, next is Councillor Caffrey. George, please, when you're ready. Councillor Caffrey. George, are you ready? Councillor Caffrey, you're muted. Yeah, I, thank you, Chair. I've unmuted myself. Um, I was about <laughs> to say that uh, this, this uh, business will be welcome in this centre of town where there are quite a few empty shops. This shop's been empty for quite a while, and I welcome this application to, to make use of these premises. So um, I'm just going to say that I would approve this. Uh, so that's thank it, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, George. Uh, um, Andrea, have we any more? I don't think so, Chair, because we had uh, Councillor Eden Green wanted to speak, but he's retracted that, and I think the other the other quotes okay. are other things. So, okay, well, it's been it's been proposed, it's been seconded in the normal manner. Can I now ask Vanessa to take the vote by roll call and inform members that the uh, what the vote is recommended? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yep, so as usual, if you can please, after I call your name, say for, against or abstain, um, a vote for is a vote to grant the application. So we've got Councillor Baker. For. Councillor Caffrey. For. Councillor Clark. For. Councillor Dixie. For. Councillor Eden Green. For. Councillor Edwards. For. Councillor Flat. Four. Councillor Glover. Four. Councillor Harvey Kirk. Four. Councillor Nolan. Four. Councillor Sweeney. Oh, uh, four, sorry. Councillor David Thomas. Uh, four. And Councillor Wilson Hamilton. Four. Okay, that's 13, that's four, so that's unanimous, um, and that's carried. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed, Vanessa. So we're going to item seven now, please, which is um, 88 Cadbury Road, Hearn. And can I ask the planning officer, uh, Ollie Ansel, to introduce this application? Thank you. Um, so, Chair, I'll be presenting the four applications this evening just for practicality essentially oh sorry uh, andrew yeah andrew please go ahead thank you fine. fine i'll set the screen up now bear with me a second um 26th of may yes it should hopefully appear in just a second it's gonna work right you should all hopefully be able to see that now um, so this proposal is for the change of use of an off licence to a personal training centre with treatment rooms to the first floor. Uh, the site is within Canterbury Road on Her in Herne Bay um, and it is a designated local centre, this particular part of that road. Um, here you can see the existing arrangement. So you've got the shop to ground floor uh, with storage above. Um, and this shows the proposed arrangement with personal training rooms to the ground floor and treatment rooms to the first floor. This next image here just shows the um, existing off license in situ at the site. Oh, uh, I don't go back. So this proposal in summary um, is obviously related to the loss of this particular retail unit within uh, the local centre. Uh, conversion of retail premises in local centres um, typically require that a site is marketed for a period of 12 months uh, amongst other things, so that's a period for at least 12 months. 
Um, the applicant has failed to demonstrate in this instance um, kind of a sufficient marketing period, having failed to market it for 12 months, um, whilst also providing limited details of any offers received um, during the stint in which they have marketed it. Um, for these reasons, it's considered that the appraisal will represent um, the unjustified loss um, of a retail unit within this kind of designated retail centre, um, and as such is recommended for refusal. Thank you. Well, thank you, Andrew. Um, right, can we, um, we've got no speakers on this because this was the one that uh, come in late. So I'm going to now open this up to members, please. Uh, yes, we had Councillor Nolan on the list first. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor Connie Nolan. Connie, please, if you would. Thank you, Chair. Um, could I just ask um, how long has the place been empty and, and marketed for? I mean, is it is it 10 months or six months or three months or, or whatever? So I believe that the site has been marketed since the end of August last year. So it's approximately three or four months short of the overall marketing period that we would usually require for a retail. Um, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. Um, Andrea, who's next? Uh, Councillor Eden Green, next, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have been to have a look at the site, um, and we've, I think, all of us had the uh, video from the applicant. Uh, the offices are clearly quite correct in policy in terms of their recommendation, and I don't um, wish to dispute uh, that recommendation according to policy. However, I think that there are a number of special circumstances here. Um, first of all, uh, it is an extension, in effect, of the property next door. It is a strange parade of shops in as much as this would be combined with the premises next door, the end of that parade. Therefore, it's not as if it's a continuous parade, nor indeed are there any shops on the other side of the road. So it's not what one might call uh, a, a normal standard shopping centre. Um, thirdly, we've got a range of shops um, in that short parade at the moment which include an osteopathy clinic, uh, a flooring shop, um, a, a kitchen shop, uh, as well as the Tesco Metro and a newspaper shop. So uh, quite a range, but not in the case of the osteopathy clinic uh, or indeed perhaps the others, the sort of retail premises that a lot of people would go in and out of. And I think, therefore, there are very clear special cases that we should take into account on this occasion coupled with the fact that increasingly it's going to be difficult to let retail shops given what's happened during the the uh, covid crisis and what's likely to happen to the retail trade in future i think we've got to take a liberal attitude towards our policies and on all of those grounds i would like to recommend grant uh, I recognise it's against strictly against uh, uh, against policy, but I think on this occasion a liberal attitude towards our policy um, should be taken, uh, and I therefore move Grant with any conditions that officers may consider to be appropriate. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Can I second that, please? Chair, can I second that, please? Yes, sorry, I was uh, just trying to unmute myself. I've got my <laughs> home phone number bring it in the background so ignore that I, I would ignore it anyway um uh, is is there any other speakers andrea yes there are can you hear yes i have unmuted myself yes there are um councillor david thomas next please david please if you would thank you okay um nick Eden green's taken a lot of my thunder um this application is rests on the fact that this area is designated retail this is from the Hermite Action Plan that was conceived in 2006 and implemented in 2010, then inserted in the local plan in 2017. This is where we come unstuck. The policy is almost 10 years out of date. Retail shops all over the area are struggling. We have just been told that the car phone warehouse is closing now, a massive shop in the town that is now empty. It's recognised nationally that locally that high streets are shrinking and buildings are being utilised in many different ways, uh, from housing and to offices, uh, due to the internet and 
internet competitions from small to big retail units. And also the COVID is likely to accelerate this. This could this would be um, an opportunity for a small business to expand and bring additional footfall to the area, helping other stores in the area making a good match for the osteopath, sports injury clinic, and other in the end of the parade. We, the council, are actually looking at the local plan as, as we speak. In 2013, a struggling tile shop was taken over by the applicant. This policy was in the Herne Bay action plan, but not in the local plan, so it was granted. Allowing a sm- this, this would allow a small, um, allowing a, a business to employ six members of staff. It's given an opportunity to take over a um, uh, next door, allowing a small business to grow and creating more employment, allowing people to run, walk, cycle to the gym. In this area, you have a kitchen showroom, a carpet shop that is, you have to call, you have to call the carpet shop for an appointment. Um, uh, and then basically, you've also got um, a, a sandwich bar, which is at the moment is closed up. Now, with the Tesco's, you've got, you've got a Tesco, it's a small Tesco's, but it's a big shop. So, basically, with the Tesco's taking up all the retail in the area, then it's, it, who's going to open a shop next door to, to Tesco's for any type of retail? Um, as for policy TC5, giving Tesco's a permission sort of years ago with a large store, it sort of undermines that, that position anyway. So, as it's... Um, as it's already been uh, proposed for for grant and seconded, there's not a lot else I can I can I can add to that, and uh, I, I, I I carry on, and I don't need to say any more. Thank you. Thank, thank you, David. Um, Andrea, have we um, have we any more? Yes, we on? do. We have a, several. Uh, Councillor Clark, next, please. Thank, thank you, Count, Councillor Clark. Ashley, please. Yes, thank you. I've just been looking at the uh, draft reasons for refusal um, and uh, what really stands out, it says that the uh, existing uh, retail use is no longer vi- viable. It hasn't demonstrated that uh, the existing retail use is no longer viable and it also talks about an unacceptable loss of protected retail provision. We're talking here about an off-licence I mean, quite frankly, uh, booze is ubiquitous. It's all over the place. You can buy it. Um, so uh, I, don't, I can hardly see that uh, these reasons would, uh, would hold water at all. And uh, when you've got a Tesco uh, right next door, I mean, quite, quite frankly, um, it's not a case of having to uh, sufficiently demonstrate or prove anything. I think we could almost take judicial notice of that. Um, It's what some people might refer to as the the bleeding obvious uh, in in the circumstances. So quite frankly, the the reasons for refusal uh, just do not stand up. Um, At the end of the day, we're all being told that we should be drinking less and exercising more. And uh, quite frankly, I would imagine, although I've not seen the uh, video of the applicant, that uh, there are uh, health benefits that will accrue from this uh, in Herne Bay. Um, but uh, on that basis, I'm more than happy to support what Councillor Eden Green has put forward, and I, I, I will support uh, uh, a grant uh, against the recommendation. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor Clark. Andrea, next speaker for me, please. Yep, the next speaker is Councillor Dixie. Yes, um, Councillor Dixie, if you go ahead, please. Thank you, Nick. Thank, thank, thank you, Colin. Um, I've seconded Nick's proposal that we should grant. Um, uh, as has already been said, our policy was uh, agreed, set up before the COVID uh, pandemic and lockdown. Um, It's now way out of date. Um, All the predictions are that the minor retail space will be significantly less uh, this time in 12 months' time. And after the lockdown, a lot of people will need to get fit. And replacing an off-license with a gym seems to be an eminently good idea. So please vote for this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Michael. We all need a gym after this lockdown, I think. But um, Andrew, have we got any more? 
Uh, yes, we have. Thank yes, you. we have. Councillor Caffrey's next. Yeah. Uh, thank, yeah, you, Chair. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Carry on, George. Thank, yeah, thanks, Colin. Uh, I was going to say that um, I think we have to be far more flexible now. I think the local plan is out of date. High streets are changing in their kind of like retail outlook. They are becoming different kinds of businesses, and we should be encouraging this sort of uh, business expansion. So I'm going to vote for it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Caffrey. George, well done. Andrea. Uh, Councillor Wilson Hamilton. Steve, go ahead. Hi. Uh, I won't go through all the technical things, as um, I think it's been clearly demonstrated. Um, it's not a viable retail shop as it's next to Tesco's, where, as um, Ashley mentioned, you can get your beer if you really need it. Uh, it's a very good use of the building, um, despite it having restricted parking outside. Uh, it's shown to be a very sustainable business. And um, James actively um, encourages people to park their cycles. Sorry, he encourages them to use cycles to get there and provides parking for that, unlike a lot of the bigger gyms. So I'm 100% behind it. I think it'd be a really good use of the building. Over and out. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Andrea, there we go. Next. Yes, our final speaker on the list at the moment is Councillor Baker. Neil, please. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Very quickly, I think it's all been covered, and I'm going to support this. Um, Clearly, in the current situation, if we're going to wait for people to show for an entire year that something is no longer viable, we're going to kill off a heck of a lot of business and we can't be doing that. The only thing I would say, um, while I'm here, having had some experience of gyms on major bus routes that in theory can be um, travelled to and from in a sustainable manner, I would just suggest to the ward councillors keep a very close eye on it because otherwise parking will very quickly become a problem. But I'm sure the three of them, two of them here will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Neil. Um, Andrea, um, was that the last speaker? Well, we now have Councillor Eden Green, who would like to speak to confirm the planning reasons for offices, please. Can I, before before Nick comes in, I'm, I'm looking at my chats here, and I think Kerry might want to come and give an overview um, on this. Uh, I could be wrong, um, but um, I understand that Kerry is now standing in for Simon uh, Simon Thomas. So, um, Kerry, um, is is that correct? Did you want to give an overview on this one? Um, yes. Just, I just wanted to say that the purpose of the policy TCL five within the local plan is to protect the retail provision within the local centre. And at the moment, it's probably too early to say that the COVID nineteen situation will will affect um, the retail provision of local centres and that work's been undertaken through the local plan review. Thank you. Thank you for um, uh, making that clear for us, Kerry. Um, uh, Nick, do you want to say anything relevant to this? Uh, only, Chair, having heard what has been said, that I've got <clears throat> policy TCL5 before me and I, I think that this application does in fact uh, meet uh, parts A, B and C of that policy, which I think is sufficient for us to go against policy on this particular occasion. I understand what Kerry has said. Uh, I accept that it's too early to tear up our planning policies because of the COVID crisis. Um, but uh, I think that there is sufficient flexibility. TCL5, I refer officers to uh, um, points A, B and C uh, and consequently recommend uh, move to grant on that case. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, Councillor Eden Green. Nick, um, is that the last one, Andrea? You're muted. <laughs> um, okay. I think so, Chair. Um, there is an open uh, Councillor David Thomas, but I'm not sure what he's referring to. And, and then there's a request uh, referring to the next few items, but I think that's the last speaker for yeah, this yeah, item. Yeah. I, I, so I, I was going to do that anyway, but I mean, if we can get this one out of the way first. Uh, David, did you want to say anything? Uh, only, only, only to, only, sorry, I was just agreeing to what Neil Baker was saying about um, 
keep an eye on the, on, on the parking and, and all that sort of thing. And as local councillors, yes, we will be, and we will be uh, hot on all that. So yes, right. Okay, thank 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 you for that, David. Um, Vanessa, can this uh, uh, can we take the vote on this? And can you explain that we are going against the officer's recommendation because it's been moved to grant by uh, Councillor Eden Green and seconded by Councillor Michael Dixie. Vanessa, thank you. Thank you, Chair. So, um, yes, so a vote for is going to be a vote to grant. Um, again, so if you can say um, for, against or abstain after I um, say your name, please. So, Councillor Baker. Four. Councillor Caffrey. Four. Councillor Clark. Four. Councillor Dixie. Four. Councillor Eden Green. Four. Councillor Edwards. Four. Councillor Flack. Four. Councillor Glover. Four. Councillor Harvey Quirk. Four. Councillor Nolan. Four. Councillor Spooner. Councillor Spooner. Yes, sorry, four. Lovely, thank you. Councillor David Thomas. Uh, four. And Councillor Wilson Hamilton. Four. Fantastic, so that's unanimous, that's carried, that's to grant. Thank you very much indeed. Um, what I intend to do on the next two items are take them, take them both on block, as suggested by some councillors. Um, uh, it's item eight and item nine. And can I ask um, Andrew, the uh, planning officer, to outline both of them, um, if he can, at the same time? I'm not sure if he can, but I'm sure he'll do his best. I'll Andrew. try. <laughs> Let me get this up. Okay. So this next proposal is an application at the Whitstable Swimming Pool uh, in Tarrant Road, Whitstable. And this is the site location. Um, it's a proposal for a single story front extension to the front of the swimming pool. Um, this plan here uh, shows the location of the extension so it's it's demarcated in a yellow to the to the uh, bottom left of the existing building um, and this would house a fitness studio um, this shows the extension uh, the front appearance of the extension in relation to the existing building um, that can be viewed from tower parade um, and this shows the this picture shows the existing arrangement on site. As you can see there's almost kind of a gap to the to the front left of the building and uh, that would be filled by this extension. Um, in summary, it's considered that this proposal um, represents a, a fairly modest addition to the building um, that has a kind of sufficient sensitivity in terms of its design um, to relate to the surrounding area. Um, it's considered that the, the impact on the street scene would be fairly minimal uh, and in turn it would also enhance the leisure provision at the site. So therefore this um, particular proposal is recommended for grant subject to conditions. Um, I'll quickly move on to one, um, which is uh, an advert consent application at the site. So it's the same site, um, kind of it's, it's basically signage for the, the new extension and the new swimming pool or the, the, the existing swimming pool. So here you can see there would be a totem sign erected um, close to the entrance adjacent to a, an existing car parking sign at the site. And this slide here shows um, the proposed signage, the proposed totem sign. So you'd have on the totem sign facing northwest, so that would face obviously towards the swimming pool. And then you'd have two others, which are kind of the same as the, the left-hand side um, advertisement. So you'd have two of them kind of almost facing either side of the road. This here shows the lettering signage um, for the swimming pool extension. Um, it'd be kind of fairly small aluminium lettering um, that would be illuminated on the front of the building. This shows the uh, existing site, the existing frontage of the site. So the totem sign would be located adjacent to that parking sign. You can see just to the right of the lamppost. Um, and this next image 
uh, simply serves to illustrate kind of those existing kind of fairly tall signage within within proximity to the site. Um, and as such, it's considered that the signage um, proposed could be accommodated within the area um, and would have kind of, it wouldn't have any unacceptable impact on the public safety of pedestrians or kind of drivers, etc. So on that basis, um, it's considered that the proposal is recommended for grant subject to conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for doing both. Um, we have speakers, I suspect. Andrea, could you call out who's first? Yes, certainly it's Councillor Clark first, please. Ashley, please. Thank you. I don't seek to waste uh, any time on this one. Um, we've got a loss of four parking spaces, but we've got the gold tank opposite, which is massive um, and will take a huge number of cars. Uh, when it's open um, but um, the only reason we're here is because uh, the council owns the site uh, the sign is useful because the swimming pool and that is set well back so it's a useful indicator for uh, people who don't know uh, visitors who might want to go swimming uh, here and not use the sea um so uh yes on that on that basis and having read the reports and the uh, conditions i can uh, i note there are no objections i can i can see nothing no reasons to oppose this and on that basis i move grant on both thank you very much indeed ashley councillor clark um andrea next speaker please councillor baker please councillor baker neil please Thanks, Chairman. Yeah, I mean, I'll happily second what Ashley has just said. Oh, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of illuminated signs in that area because I think there is a risk of it proliferating, but I know I'm not going to win any argument with that one. So uh, no objections. Hopefully it does well, and hopefully we do get leisure centres back one day. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor Baker Neil. Thank you. Um, Andrea, any, anybody else? Yeah, final speaker at the moment on the list is Councillor Caffrey, please. George, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. C could I ask the officer? Um, there, there is a, a footpath to the to the west of the swimming pool, which goes from the beach into the car park. Is, is that still going to be uh, available once once the building's been done? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, George. Andrew, did you uh, did you get that question from Councillor Caffrey? I believe so, yes. Um, I don't think that the footpath is going to be um, unacceptably impacted by the um, extension. I'll just double-check the image here. Uh, I may have to just quickly double-check the block pan. Let me have a look. Apologies, bear with me a second. Not quite clear from that. Finding out, bear with me a second, apologies. So no, the uh, the existing um, footpath would still be accessible to the side of the uh, proposed extension. So it, it would be slightly reduced in width, but it would still be accessible. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, George, for, for explaining that, Andrew. Um, Andrew, any, any more on the list? No, there's no more on the list, Chair. Okay, uh, Vanessa, um, can we take each... Item seven, sorry, item eight first, and then uh, sorry, roll. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, 
No, no, my fault. I wasn't quick enough on the old um, keyboard there. Can I ask a question for the officer, please? Yeah, um, go, go ahead, uh, Connie. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew, please. You've just said that the footpath will be narrowed, and I just wondered from how wide to how wide. I'm, I'll be talking about, and excuse my ignorance, but I think it's called Squeeze Gut Alley. It's a particularly um, narrow alley. Are we talking about sort of reducing it down to, to that kind of size? Um, I don't believe so. No, I can actually, if it's simpler, I can just simply share the block plan that I have in front of me um, so, yeah. that, you, so that you can see that um, arrangement. So bear with me a second. I'll do that. Because yeah. I'm, I'm a great fan of, of footpaths and particularly Whitstable is blessed with so many. And it would be a shame if it went from something where you could actually walk down to a breast to something which was a bit of a squeeze. I don't know. I mean, I haven't gone and looked at that. Yeah, footpath. I mean, it, it appears as though it would reduce it by... Um, half of the width hopefully you can see this now can you the yeah block plan showing where the studio extension would be um so you have the footpath kind of reduced down to the side similar in width to i suppose what it is just slightly to the north so actually oh okay okay actually, so we've widened out and now it's gone back to similar side to the north. i don't know if george Caff uh, councillor caffrey is, is familiar with it uh, yes, yes, I, I am familiar with the present footpath, and uh, from what I can see on the plans, that's that's perfectly acceptable to me. Anyway, that's great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Very you, well. Connie. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Connie and George, on that. Um, right. Well, I don't think there's anybody else. Uh, Vanessa, can we take the roll call vote on item eight first? Thank you. Hi, Chair. Yeah, of course, no problem. So, again, um, a vote for is a vote to grant. When I say your name, could you say for, against or abstain, please? Councillor Baker? For. Councillor Caffrey? For. Councillor Clark? For. Councillor Dixie? For. Councillor Eden Green? For. Councillor Edwards? For. Councillor Flack? For. Councillor Glover? For. Councillor Harper For. Councillor Nolan? Four. Councillor Spooner? Four. Councillor David Thomas? Uh, four. And Councillor Wilson Hamilton? Four. Okay, thank you, everyone. That was um, unanimous, 13 votes for, none against, and none abstaining. So that's quite thank, thank you, Vanessa. Can you take the next uh, item then, please, the uh, advertisement? Please, thank you. Yeah, we can, so same procedure again. Um, for, against or abstain, a vote for is a vote to grant. Councillor Baker? For. Councillor Caffrey? For. Councillor Clark? For. Councillor Dixie? For. Councillor Eden Green? For. Councillor Edwards? For. Councillor Flack? For. Councillor Glover? For. Councillor Harvey Quirk? For. Councillor Nolan? Four. Councillor Spooner. Four. Councillor David Thomas. <laughs> Four. Councillor Wilson. Four. Great, again, that's unanimous, and that was to grant. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Vanessa. Item 10 now. Um, there is no urgent business, I don't think. Uh, Andrea? No, I have no urgent business, no. Okay, and we don't have to, uh, we go to item 11, we don't have to ins exclude the press or public because there's no urgent business for this meeting. And I will now close the meeting at 17.54 hours. And can I, uh, can I request the DSO to stop the live streaming? Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for their attendance and um, all the help given this afternoon.